Joining us now is Senator Tom Cotton. He's a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Sir, it's always great to have you on. The administration says the Taliban is professional and businesslike. You can see our reporters on the ground uh, have a different take. You know, they're saying, look, the executions are back. Women's rights are gone. The chief enforcer, Mullah Tarabi of the Taliban, said the following, quoting here, no one will tell us what our laws should be. We will follow Islam and we will make our laws on the Quran, cutting off hands is very necessary for security. I mean, so much for the Taliban 2.0, Senator. Yeah, Trace, I guess they will be very businesslike when they execute the hands of minor felons and criminals in Afghanistan. Um, but who could have guessed that a degenerate gang of 7th century savages would behave like a degenerate 7th century savage? Anyone who knew how the Taliban behaved back in the 1990s, last time they ruled, but you don't even have to go back that far, Trace. Mm -hmm. You could see the way the Taliban had continued to act in the places of Afghanistan or it exercised influence and on its march to Kabul over the summer and up to August 15th when Kabul fell. They didn't hide who they were. They were doing exactly the same thing. They may have said the few pleasing words in Kabul that duped Joe Biden and Tony Blinken, but this is who the Taliban always has been. This is who they always will be. This is why it was such a catastrophe to leave behind thousands of American citizens and green card holders and Afghans who serve with our troops and all their families, why we still have to work to get all those people out. And what about those numbers? I mean, Trey Yanks on the ground saying, look, some of these Afghans who worked in the U.S. Embassy, Americans are still there. They're, they are, you know, they're not being, uh, there's, no, there's no active effort right now to get them out. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's not apparent what the Biden administration is doing to get them out. And the Biden administration has acknowledged that they left behind the vast majority of vetted and approved Afghans who worked with our troops. At the same time, they also evacuated apparently thousands of Afghans about whom we know next to nothing, who maybe had no particular connection to our troops at all. Um, and this has led to all kinds of problems in terms of, like, look at the measles outbreak that we've had at some of these sites where evacuees yeah. are being held. Two Afghan evacuees in Wisconsin are now charged with sex crimes, including sex crimes against minors. This is what happened because Joe Biden's rush disorganized withdrawal. We left behind those who we should have gotten out. And we brought with us a lot of people who we have no idea who they are or if they pose any threat to us. I want to move on to Iran, if I can. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said this about the new push for an Iranian nuclear deal. Watch. We don't have uh, yet uh, an agreement by Iran to return to the, uh, the talks in Vienna. Um, we're very much prepared to return to Vienna to continue the talks. Uh, and uh, the question is uh, whether and if so when Iran is, uh, is prepared to do that. Yeah, the president is now imploring Iran, you know, begging to come back to the table. Why is Iran suddenly setting the tempo here, Senator? Well, it's exactly what they did in the Clinton administration and the Obama administration and now in the Biden administration. The Ayatollahs know that Joe Biden is desperate for a deal, for any deal. So they're going to set the terms and the conditions of even sitting down for negotiations. Uh, we're probably willing to grant concessions behind the scenes just to start those negotiations that were stopped earlier this summer. Now, I think the Biden administration was shocked that the Ayatollahs wouldn't come back into the nuclear deal. Uh, you know, they were trying to surrender to them. The Ayatollahs just wouldn't accept the terms of surrender. And they're not going to, they're going to be even less likely now that they've seen how weak Joe Biden has been in Afghanistan. So I think they expect even more concessions, which will be dangerous for Americans. Yeah, I, I got to go, Senator. But very quickly, you text, you uh, tweeted about President throwing uh, Border Patrol agents under the bus about this horseback thing. Y your quick final thoughts on that. Look, the Border Patrol have given, been given an impossible job by this president who doesn't want to enforce our border. They're brave men and women in law enforcement. There's plenty of places on our southern border where Border Patrol agents need to use horses to cover uh, large amounts of forbidding terrain. Uh, and I think it's disgraceful that Joe Biden is blaming these brave men and women in law enforcement for his mm -hmm. failures to yeah. secure our border and, in fact, opening our border up. The blame game seems to be a, a somewhat of a pattern for the administration. Senator Cotton, thank you so much for your time, sir. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks.